Gender sucks. Gender's horrible. Gender's bad. Gender's boring. He sucks in the ring. He's not a good wrestler. Run along, little boys and girls. The street lights are on. The fuck out of here. The internet blows up when Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton take on each other because it was boring, right? Jinder Mahal isn't good in the ring. He's not a good wrestler. He's boring. These are obviously, I hope that these internet fucks are after 2010. Like, they did not watch any wrestling before 2010. I'm hoping that's just the case, right? And they're just like some seven-year-olds fucking just playing around. I hope. Because anybody before fucking 2010, anybody telling me that Hulk Hogan, these are guys that held that championship and we didn't blink an eye. Hulk Hogan, Yoko Zuna, Big Daddy Cool fucking Diesel. These are just some of the fucking guys that held that fucking cha- that champion. Because whether you call it a universal, a world, or just a WWE championship, we all know what it is. It's a heavyweight championship. You're telling me those guys had fucking immense skill over fucking Jinder Mahal? Absolutely not. Jinder Mahal doesn't need to be flying all over the ring to be fucking entertaining to all of you, all right? So for you saying he's boring, it's obviously because you want him flying all over the ring like some of today's superstars because that's what you're trying to get wrestling to evolve fully into. You want wrestling to totally be your little fucking... Uh, Lucha Underground type playground, right? Everyone's flying all over the place. Die, flip, die, fucking fast-paced, high-octane, high-velocity, the whole match. All three hours of Raw, you would love that, wouldn't you? You'd be entertained. I hope to God that never happens for the sake and the sanity of professional wrestling because I loved those Hulk Hogan, Sergeant Slaughter matches back in the day. I loved fucking seeing Yoko Zuna in there and all of his matches Yokozuna couldn't even fuck. It took him set fucking seven minutes just to go from one fucking side of the ring to the other side of the ring. But you know what? I still loved watching Yokozuna because the man makes the belt. The belt doesn't make the man. You just need to look the part when you have the World Heavyweight Championship. You need to look the part. And as long as you can at least wrestle, you ain't even gotta be great. Fuck the greatest. You ain't even gotta be great. You barely have to be good. Yokozuna. You barely have to be good. But as long as you look the fucking part and you can go out there and have a good actual heavyweight contest that people believe into, that's all you need to do. You have served your purpose. And fans like me, old school fans, we fucking love that Orton and Mahal fucking match at Backlash. We love that Orton and Mahal match at Money in the Bank. Because that's old school professional wrestling. Two heavyweights in there. Fuck the dives. Fuck the flips. Fuck your 450 splashes in your fucking Horikarana, fucking Hanukkah 160 super salt somersault inverted atomic fuckwad maneuvers. Whatever the fuck you want to come up with. Whatever, whatever's the in thing in Lucha Underground or the in thing over in New Japan. Fucking then go there and watch that shit. But don't take away my fucking entertainment. You want fucking all that shit. You got your little cruiserweight division. You got your fucking Lucha Underground. You got New Japan Pro Wrestling. You got your little Finn Balor. You got your fucking, you got your Nevilles. All right, you got the guys that are going to give you all those fucking moves. Let fans like me enjoy what we watched pro wrestling in the begin with for heavyweights. Jinder Mahal looks the fucking part from the entrance to his look to his entourage. Then you got some fucking numb nuts out there. Jinder Mahal's never even won a match on his own. He's always using art outside interference. I'm getting so teary-eyed. I'm really going to throw a tantrum. This is ruining my life. I don't know how I can go about my fucking day now. Jinder's not winning matches on his own. It's a fucking heel champion. He never. Understand this, you dumb motherfuckers. He never has to win one match on his own. Ever because it works. It just fucking works. Bottom line. Just does. I know that fucking makes you salty and it makes you want to tear up inside. It's it just wants to make you just hit the keyboard. BC, I just don't like gender. 
This is fine. If you just don't like him, just say he doesn't do it for you. That's fine. We all have differences in opinion, right? Becky Lynch never did it for me. But don't come on here and tell me he's fucking, he can't wrestle. He obviously fucking can wrestle. You know how we know? He just put on a 20-minute match at Money in the Bank, you dumb motherfucker. That's called wrestling. That's what Yokozuna did. That's what Hulk Hogan did. That's what Sergeant Slaughter did. I can keep on going with fucking many names. Big Daddy Cold Diesel. That's called wrestling. Just because it's not what you like today, don't fucking tell me. You look at me when I'm talking to you. You don't tell me that he can't wrestle. You dumb son of a bitch. The fuck out of here, man. The things that I fucking... Re he can't wrestle, BC. I don't like him. No, you can even say he's boring because that's your opinion. Far from boring for me. He fucking... I mean, what's, if he's boring, you would not have survived in WWE's entertainment in the 80s and 90s, guys. You fucking wouldn't. Yokozuna would have would fucking put you to sleep then. He never even fucking spoke on that. He just said fucking Banzai. That was it. And he went out there and fucking sat on people, guys. What would you have done? Big Daddy Cool fucking just gave people a boot and a fucking jackknife. What would you guys have done with these type of wrestlers, man? I, I, if, it, it boggles my mind. That's why I say I hope these are just people that are like well into the 2000s that were just like born or just started watching wrestling. Because anybody, anybody who's got the fucking balls to say that in the 80s and 90s if they were around that Jinder Mahal is boring and can't wrestle is absolutely undeniably the dumbest wrestling fan alive. So the next time you guys hear somebody say, oh, he's boring or he can't wrestle, make sure you really dissect who the person is because I promise you, you're going to find a lot of fucking faults in their storyline. You're going to find a lot of holes in what they're fucking saying because you, as smarter wrestling fans, knowledgeable, can point them back to the 80s and 90s and pick a plethora of champions. And yes, you say, it's different today, BC. Wrestling has changed. Yeah, you're damn right it has. We have all these fucking cruiserweights now. We have a different style that has come in. Absolutely. But the formula should never change. Heavyweights should be heavyweights. And I don't need my heavyweights to be doing 450 splashes or Hurricanrana fucking Hanukkah inadverted uh, atomic uh, nut job sack fucking bullshit maneuvers. Get the fuck out of here. I want my fucking head. You can have that on the show. Absolutely. Have a cruiserweight match. Have a fucking uh, a 450 splash match. Have a fucking lucha match. Have a fucking, uh, have a fucking high octane match, right? Where it's just 30 minutes of people flying all over the place and diving and fucking, it's like, it's like a ping pong game. Like, where the fuck's the ball going? Oh, fucking, oh shit. Neville's fucking bouncing to the fucking moon. Oh fuck. Hopefully he comes back. You can have all of that, but give me my heavyweights in the main event. And you got the balls to say... Or, and Mahal was boring. They didn't do anything for me. What the fuck are you talking about? The match was a heavyweight match. Two people that looks the part, Randy Orton and Jinder Mahal. They gave their fucking 20-minute match that was thoroughly entertaining. And then the fucking finish at the end was fucking great. It was the same as Backlash being seen. I felt they were the same ending. It was fucking entertaining, and it was different. Go back and watch both fucking matches. I can point out 37 things at least at the top of my head that were different. Tell me it's the same. Nonsensical bullshit. So I'm going to leave it at this. Thank you for letting me rant, guys. By the way, happy Wednesday, and we'll get the SmackDown for like at least seven minutes, right? But uh, I'm going to end it with this for Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal is a real champion, old school style. Deal with it. No, literally, 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 literally. For the Jinder haters out there that are about to type, BC, you deal with it. He sucks. BC, you deal with it, dude. Fuck you, BC. You deal with it. He sucks. You know what, guys? I'm going to say it again. Deal with it. He is your champion. Because I said deal with it. <laughs> Cause that gender's on fire That gender's on fire Wait for it That gender's on fire That gender's on fire
Thank you, Vince, for booking that shit. On to SmackDown. Now I really got like seven minutes, guys. All right, thanks for that rant. But I went way too long on Jinder Mahal. Fuck. I got the, I got the Jinder haters riled up. I tell you that. Fucking Iowa. What do I type? I gotta type something. Fucking BC. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura, Dolph Ziggler, right? Decent match last night. But what, I mean, the, the purpose, I, I don't understand. That came out of nowhere. We know that they like fighting each other, though. That's fucking good. Um, that just came out of nowhere, man. I, I guess I missed the fucking advertisement earlier in the night. And when I sat back down, it was fucking Shinsuke and Dolph. I was like, oh shit, all right, let's do it. They gave him some good time too. Here's the thing. I felt it was slow paced. Um, so I, I don't understand. Some, some fucking higher pace, but too slow for Shinsuke on, on television when you only got the 10 minute time limit. Uh, I, I feel that Shinsuke and Dolph need to highlight a little bit more of a higher paced uh, fucking match. Little bit, little bit, because the psychology in the fucking, the toned down spots, perfect. That's what you need. It's just when they should have gone a little higher, they did not. For, and for two guys like Dolph and, you know, unlike Randy and Jinder, two guys like Shinsuke and Dolph need a little more, some more moments in that match where they had to go a little bit faster paced. So for me, Still not where it should be with those two. I feel like they have a lot more to give. And Shinsuke came right out on Talking Smack last week and said, I love working with Dolph. And he said Dolph, if he went to New Japan Pro Wrestling, would shoot right to the top. So I think they have so much more to offer. I don't know, man. But for some reason, they like working well together. And um, so, you know, is what it is. Shinsuke Nakamura obviously picks up the win here. Vince is protecting him. If Vince really wanted to protect him, he wouldn't have him fucking wrestle every week. But is what it is. At least we get to see some Shinsuke Nakamura. Kevin Owens is a weird thing here because Kevin Owens came out for an open challenge to anybody from Dayton, Ohio. This brought out AJ Styles. For what reason, I don't know because we saw them feuding at Backlash. So now they're going to redo this feud again, obviously. Kevin Owens and fucking AJ Styles. Okay. Um, I guess that's what they're going to have going into SummerSlam. I, I don't understand, again, the meaning of it. But at least this segment was really fun because... <laughs> You had fucking Jack Gable come out. Now, Gable is saying, I just moved to Dayton, Ohio, so I can fight you because it's an open challenge to anyone from Dayton, Ohio. And, and Kevin Owens is like, when did you move to Dayton, Ohio? Gable's like, this morning. Owens is like, what's your address? Gable's like, 3640 Kendall Highway, some shit, fucking highway, Dayton, Ohio. It's off the highway. That's like a university, guys, in Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> so... Owens is like, absolutely die. AJ Styles is like, no, he's a citizen of a date in Ohio. Ring the bell. Ref is like, all right, yeah, ring the bell. Kevin Owens is like, no, what are you doing? Owens just turned around. Gable just suplexes him. The bell's ringing. So now we got a match, Gable and Owens. I thought the segment came off really funny. So as nonsensical, it was really entertaining for some reason. But I, I, I have no idea what it was for because you left American Alpha off of TV for so long. That was their re-debut. You're going to have... Chad Gable, come on, I mean, J Jordan just came out and fucking just like gave him a high five and let Gable go too, so I don't understand why American Alpha was gone for so long, we thought when they were come back, would there be a heel turn maybe, but that was it, American Alpha was left off TV for so long, Gable comes back and just takes a, a clean L from Kevin Owens, um, and then, uh, who was it, AJ Styles just stood up from the broadcast booth and they just had like a little stare down, so evidently they're gonna redo that whole feud again, okay, uh, speaking of guys who have been left off TV, come back. How about Luke Harper? He took on Jinder Mahal last night. Obviously, Jinder Mahal ain't going to lose. Jinder Mahal picked up the win over Luke Harper. And this brought out Randy Orton. Randy Orton attacks Jinder Mahal. But Jinder Mahal is uh, able to escape. This brings in the Singh brothers. Both Singh brothers got RKO'd. One of the brothers got RKO'd from the fucking top rope. Maybe the middle rope. Up on the ropes, he fucking jumped. What the fuck are you doing jumping at Randy? What are you going to do? Right? Is that going to create any fucking leverage for you? Is that going to make you gain 30 pounds? You're still going to get ROK'd out of your fucking shoes, motherfucker. And that's what happened. Both got RKO'd. And Jinder Mahal's in the crowd at this point protecting. That's what I mean. This guy fucking just looks the champion, man. He He's so good with that championship. And his face is telling the story like, motherfucker, you just ruined my moment, you know? And he's got his, he's clutching his championship. Orton's like... I, you know, Fade the Black, SmackDown goes up there. I thought that was fucking brilliant, man. That They're going to go forward with a another Orton and Jinder Mahal match. And fans like me, the old school fans, were thrilled, man. Give me Orton Jinder part three, motherfucker. Part three. Three with two. I, 
I'm fucking on all cylinders. Give him, give us part three. Orton was in a good interview backstage too. Where it was really, you know, those heartfelt interviews where it's just like, it's all a black background. I think it was Phillips who was interviewing him. And he was just talking about what he's going to do to Jinder Mahal next time and how he embarrassed him. And, and uh, he thought his father was in trouble at, at Money in the Bank. And it was real good. And at the very end, it was really good because just no more words. And, and no more words. And the camera just zoomed in on Orton. And Orton just went silent for like five, six, seven seconds, whatever the fuck it was. And Orton was just staring. And that's really good in production. Anybody who understands production knows that that silence and just zooming in on the face... That is drawing out emotion. That's badass. Any fucking filmmaker knows this. Any fucking producer would know that. Um, it was just a fucking awesome, awesome segment. And, uh, and getting that emotion, it gets it more intimate with the audience. Perfectly done by WWE um, in that fashion as well. Now, really funny that we don't see any Ty Dillinger, Maria Kanellis, and, uh, and Mike Kanellis now. No longer Mike Bennett. They actually did a little segment on SmackDown, but I don't believe that actually aired. So they kept Maria and Bennett off as well. Ty Dillinger off. A bunch of people still off. So it's weird. It's like they claim they're searching for talent, but they are they have a plethora of talent that I don't think they know what to fucking do with right now. They can't fit it in. Some people say SmackDown should be three hours and Raw should be two. I guess that's open for debate. I always felt if you're going to have Raw three hours, then you got to have SmackDown at three hours. But uh, it, it's unfortunate because you can only have so many segments in a two-hour show and they can't use everybody, I guess. I mean, where would you fit Ty Dillinger in? Where would you fit a, a, a whole fucking uh, Maria Kanellis, Mike Kanellis segment? I have no fucking idea. But um, Ty Dillinger has vanished. MIA. Um, moving on, what, what else do we have? Fucking... Uh, I'm going to skip a lot of shit, guys, because my rant on Jinder Mahal went way too long. So I do have to skip everything else. I have to go right to the women, guys. The women all came out. Daniel Bryan made his decision. His decision is everything. What well, exactly what we fucking thought, right? We're going to have another Money in the Bank briefcase match. That's exactly what we fucking knew was going to happen. They're going to fast forward it into next week. So next week, SmackDown, Money in the Bank 2. This is obviously WWE saying uh, Finn Balor's, oops, we fucked up. We're sorry. So this is them fucking trying to make it up to us. <laughs> They're like, we're going to rectify it. This time we're going to give you a real one. But you know what? The the moment's destroyed. You know what I mean? Everyone pays their money for a pay-per-view because they want to see the storylines and the build come to fruition and all fucking get explained at the pay-per-view. You don't buy a pay-per-view to build a storyline or to keep it fucking going. You just fucking, you, you know, it, it's okay if you want to have a match at a next pay-per-view, in other words, if your main event is at a pay-per-view and they end up fighting at the next pay-per-view and even the next pay-per-view, you can do that. That's fine. Continue your storyline. But there has to be some sort of payoff at that pay-per-view. That one got nothing. There was no payoff at all. A, a, a guy, a guy who wasn't even in the match, uh, gets the briefcase and hands it to fucking Carmella. That's, that's not a payoff. And then they build it as a historic moment for the females. Well, if that's the case, that's how you destroyed it. And by the way, in 13 minutes and 20 seconds, that's how you fucking handle a women's historic match when it was just starting to get good. You know, was their plan all along? Because we're going to really sell them on, on they have to tune in the SmackDown. So now, guys, pay-per-views are just so to get us hyped for SmackDowns now and Raws. It's, they flip-flopped. It used to be Raw and SmackDown gets us hyped for the pay-per-view. Now you got to tune in for the pay-per-view to get hyped for SmackDown or to get hyped for Raw. This is fucking ass backwards. And this begins a slippery slope. If this was just a one-off deal, guys, I'm fine with that. I wouldn't complain about that shit. But you're going to now... I mean, this opens the door to Pandora's box because where does it end? This is just the first time of many times, I bet you, in the future. Because now Vince, Kevin Dunn, all the product... Everybody knows that they can get away with this now. They don't have to have a payoff at a pay-per-view. And they can just just make us hang, right? Cliffhanger at the pay-per-view to get us over to SmackDown now. It used to be the opposite. Cliffhanger at SmackDown and Raw get us to the pay-per-view. We pay money to see the final outcomes. Fuck, man. If you wanted to have another Money in the Bank women's ladder match, that's fine. You could have done that again. There's other ways to go about it, but you could have had a fucking winner. James Ellsworth could have helped in another way, but you still let Carmella climb it. Let Carmella get that fucking briefcase. That's... I don't think WWE understands why we're pissed off. 
because they keep on hammering the fact that it's no DQ and there's no rules. Yes, there's no rules except for one. The person in the match has to climb the ladder and retrieve the briefcase. Whether that's a written rule or an unwritten rule, we all know it's a universal rule. You fucked with the purity of that shit, as 2.0 said. If I can steal some, some wordage from 2.0, you fucked with the purity of that shit. You can't do that, man. So my point here, guys, is yes, that's going to be awesome next week to look forward to. And hopefully they put on a much better match than they did at fucking Money in the Bank. Again, they only have 13 minutes. Do they even give them more on Smack? I mean, that's the problem here. Are they really going to give them 20 minutes on a TV show that's only two hours? And on top of that, this should be a kick-ass match with four commercial breaks. We'll actually see about 10 minutes of this motherfucker probably. These are the holes we now have to deal with because they didn't want to just give it to us at the pay-per-view. Or not even give it to us. They didn't want to fucking offer what we paid for. They didn't want to fucking offer that on a silver platter at the pay-per-view. No, now we have to fucking watch a match that's probably going to be no more than fucking 17 minutes with four commercial breaks. The fuck out of here, man. Nah, that's upsetting. You know what I mean? That, that, that now they have to oops and backtrack. And fucking say, oh, we did fuck up. We'll give it to you again next week. Do it right the first time. You're a multi-billion dollar company. You shouldn't be making blunders like this. Um, all in all, guys, because of the gender rant and because of my fucking frustration still with this fucking little ladder match things, it sounds like I was frustrated with SmackDown last night. I wasn't. SmackDown actually delivered last night. Um, definitely a decent show. But um, there's still things that need to be rectified. And, uh, and, and it all revolves around this fucking, you know, I, I can't wait till next week, but not so much to get into the match. I can't wait till this whole thing is over with. I want this money in the bank shit fucking done. I want to move on. Cause to me, WWE fucked up. That's it. It's over with. Um, you, you know, at this point, just prolonging this money in the bank shit is just getting fucking stupid and irritating. I will say this though. That sucks if somebody else gets it next week. Carmella and James Ellsworth look like gold with that briefcase. Again, if they only got it a different way Sunday, I would have been totally fine with it. But they, I, I said this way before the pay-per-view, and I say it to this very day. Carmella should have won that match, and Carmella and James Ellsworth look best with that briefcase. And this will only fucking catapult Carmella from here. And by the way, Carmella hit an awesome promo last night, guys. Carmelo, Carmelo, Carmelo Anthony, Carmella started SmackDown off with an awesome promo. This was the most authentic we've seen Carmella ever. And uh, so she, that's what I mean. She's already got this new fucking confidence. Imagine what she could do going forward. That's only her first appearance after with that Money in the Bank briefcase. I hope, I really do hope they make the right decision here and Keep it with Carmella. I think she was supposed to win this match all along. It was just the ending to that Money in the Bank match. Horrendous. But um, that's going to be a shame if somebody else gets it and not Carmella, man, because she looks like gold with that shit. That's it, guys. BC Amplify. That was SmackDown. I will see you guys Friday for Weekend Update, episode number two, the news, the rumors from the week in professional wrestling. I will have, man, for you on Friday. I was 100% last week on last weekend's uh, weekend update. I told you guys there was no plans for a sixth woman when the whole internet was buzzing. Who's the sixth woman? Because there was a leak. And I told you guys, from what I'm hearing, is there is zero sixth woman. It was just a fucking typo, a uh, misprint. I was right about that. I told you guys Braun Strowman in some way was going to interfere with Roman Reigns' segment. Ends up being in the actual match. Not his announcement for SummerSlam, but I told you guys Braun Strowman was coming on Monday night. That's what I was told. That's what happened. Batting a thousand, man. Uh, and, and, I, and I hope to keep that. I only will give you guys news and rumors that are actual. How did the best way to put this? I don't like just putting rumors out there because, I mean, if that's the case, we could just put a million rumors out there. That, that's, that's all they are. Nothing sticking. When I give out a rumor, it's because there's some substance behind it. You guys know how I run this channel, man. I will never tell you guys something if there isn't actual backing behind it. Substance. Like, in other words, at any moment, I'm going to find out this rumor is actual fact. If I know shit like that, I'll tell you guys, and that's what Weekend Update is. You guys have been asking for that for a while, because when I made this channel, I used to have a lot of news and, and the rumors that I was hearing from down at the Performance Center. You guys really like that. 
But then you started really liking the reviews and, and, and the reactions and things of that nature. So we kind of went another way. Now I want to combine the two again. Weekend update, episode number two, this Friday. Um, fuck it all amped up, man. Shit. And I haven't even had a coffee yet, guys. Uh, so we're going to end it there. We're going to kick Wednesday's ass. I will see you guys Friday. Do you want it one more time? I'll give it to you. That gender's on fire. That gender's on fire. Ow. Check you later.